Okay guys, we're back for the last part of the equation here, making my ultimate band, and we're gonna go through my top 10 guitarists. Uh, at number 10, Dimebag Daryl. Uh, some people were like, holy shit, why isn't this guy higher? Um, the main reason he's not higher is repetition. A lot of Pantera stuff to me does sound the same same chuggy chuggy riff which is great don't get me wrong i don't want to get any hate from you people freaking out and bitching oh you don't fucking know what you're talking about i know what i'm fucking talking about i'm just saying it's i love don i love dime and he rest in peace i love his what he brought musically he changed the genre and i love that but number 10 he's cool number nine cc deville from poison for the longest time, C.C. DeVille was one of my favorite guitar players ever. Is there substance there? No, not really. Okay? C.C., we know what Poison brings to the table. They're there to have a good time. They're there to have fun. And C.C. does that. And when you go to see a Poison show, you're not there to cure cancer or solve world hunger. You're there to have a good time, see some boobs, listen to some music, and have a couple beers. And you know what? Nobody has more fun on stage, I think, than C.C. DeVille. And uh, his solo this couple weeks ago was fantastic when we saw him live. And the solos and Poison songs are fun. So if you don't like C.C., I don't fucking care. The next is Slash. A lot of people um, will definitely disagree with me on the Slash thing. Um, I... I like Slash's playing. Um, there's a flow to it that I, I really enjoy. Um, this is a solo on Paradise City. Um, my favorite GNR song is still Paradise City. It has been since it came out. It's never changed. There were things on Use Your Illusion that Slash did with the guitar that I really liked. Um, obviously, he didn't play on Chinese Democracy. Um, there's a couple songs on Chinese Democracy I like, but obviously weren't written by him. So, Slash. The next is John Petrucci from Dream Theater. Um, John Petrucci, his playing on, I believe Dream Theater now has 12 or 13 albums. He's always good, and he's always doing something that I, I stop and go, holy shit. Even on The Astonishing, which, when I first heard it, I fell in love with that album. Now that it's been out a couple of years, I don't even touch it. It's way too fucking long. But there are even parts on that record that his guitar playing is, is amazing. The next is Chuck from Death. I don't need to say anything more. That's the end of the, him. It's Chuck, okay? If you're a metal fan, you love Chuck. He was the shit. So, Chuck, rest in peace, man. You fucking rule. The next, and a lot of you will probably hate this, and I don't fucking care because it's my list. Carrie King. Carrie King, to me, is an excellent thrash guitarist. And you know what? I, I was going to put Dave Mustaine here or Marty Friedman or Scott Ian, um, but I picked Carrie for a number of reasons, or even Jeff Hanneman, um, but I picked Carrie because there's certain things about Carrie's playing that I like more than the other guys. And Dave Mustaine's my boy, okay? I love Dave Mustaine. You literally have a picture of him on I have a, a, an autographed photo of Dave Mustaine hanging in my living room. Uh, and uh, he's my hero. But I prefer Carrie's guitar playing. The next is a 2-4. Because you can't talk about one guy without the other technically. Because they're the ones who made metal history. They also kind of helped form the metal vibe. And that is Glenn, T Glenn Tipton and K.K. Downing <laughs> from Judas Priest. That dual guitar attack was amazing. You could also throw in the guys from Maiden, Adrian Smith, 
um, Dave Murray and Yannick Gers. They, they could also be included in this list. If I were to have a longer list, they definitely would have been in there. Um, <clears throat> but Glenn Clip Tipton, and I can't Clifton. say I can't say Glenn's name. Uh, Glenn and KK from Priest, you guys are just fucking amazing. Next is Randy Rhodes. Uh, we only had him for a short, short time. Wait, what number is it? This? this is number three. Oh. Randy Rhodes, uh, very, very short time, but what he did on those Aussie records was magical. Uh, that man's solo on Crazy Train is just ridiculous. Um, gone too soon. I would have loved to have seen what he would have done as he got older. Uh, I think his playing would have been even more mature. Number two, and we're going back to the Mr. Bigwell again, because why the hell not? I love them. Uh, Paul Gilbert from Mr. Big and his solo stuff. Uh, first off, his solo stuff is amazing. Like This guy's playing is ridiculous. Now, you take that into the fold of Mr. Big, and it is... It's awesome. That's the only way I can put it. It's awesome. And number one, and my daughter won't be surprised by this, but some of you might be, is Michael Wilton from Queen Trike. Uh, especially the last two albums. Uh, I'm basing this mainly on the last two albums because back in the day, the lead guitarist was uh, Chris DeGarmo, uh, and I believe he left after Promised Land. I believe it was Promised Land that was the last record he did with them. Don't quote me on that. Um, for the longest time, Chris DeGarmo was my favorite guitar player. Uh, Michael Wilton back then was more in the background. He, he, he didn't sh get to shine as much. Now, he's the lead in, in Queen's Reich, and, and what he does on these last two albums, it's just day and night from what Queensryche was the last 10, 15 years. The last 10, 15 years before Jeff Tate got booted or left or whatever the fuck the story is, uh, they were handicapped. They really were. They, um, they're, they're, the spark was gone out of the all the playing and I don't just mean the drums and, 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 and stuff like I meant I mean the bass playing was lackluster Eddie Jackson didn't really have much to work with um, Wilton and whomever I think Parker's Lundgren was the guitar player one, and I believe he still is with the band um, they were handicapped with Jeff Tate and the band because Jeff wanted this whole I don't know what the hell he was trying to do to Queen Drake, but he was making them sound like a mix of like Super Tramp and Ario Speedwagon. So as a as a fucking uh, diehard Queen Drake fan, you're sitting there and you go and you buy a record. And you put it on, and you're excited, and then it's basically, it sounds like they're farting on a CD. The last couple of Queen Drake's al albums with Jeff Tate are almost unlistenable. Like, my daughter loves Queen Drake, and you, you know, she, I'm sure she'll agree. The last couple of albums with Jeff Tate are almost unlistenable. I only have them to complete their discography. See, even she said, my daughter will listen to almost anything. She, is, she will give a band a chance, and she only has those albums in her collection to complete the collection. So what does that tell you? That's how bad it is. So that is the end of the, the top guitarists. We now have the makings of a band. Now, I'm not necessarily, I, I while shooting this, I've been playing back in my head where people fit. So, what I'm going to do for the last part, it's not necessarily going to be position one. That's going to be my drummer, or my bass player, or my singer, or my guitarists. So in the next part of the video, 
I'm going to explain to you why I put these people in here and what I think the band will sound like. See you next time.